What is your experience now away from money? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, about efficaciousness. Mm -hmm. There's a long word for you. Um, among patients using the drugs, you have experience with a large group. Mm -hmm. Do the drugs work for them? So I mentioned I did this quick and dirty little survey, yeah. and 70% um, of the people that of this N of 140 have not tried it. Not tried, not tried it. And only one person said that they've had great results. Um, Anecdotally, I've talked to other people who are in the clinical trials, um, and there are people that are considered super responders. Everybody wants to be, you know, wear the, wear the cape, yeah. right, and be a super responder. And those people, um, their lives are changed. But one, one thing that I want to mention is in the clinical trials, the, the guideline was uh, greater than 50% um, uh, efficacy in, in the month. And for somebody with migraine, you're looking at a scale of one to 10, if you're at an eight and then you're at a four with this new drug, you can function. Mm -hmm. It's life changing. You can, you can participate in your life. You can go to work with the pain level of four, but at eight, you're in bed. So I'm trying to understand what you're telling me. Is it that patients expect to go to zero when they don't? No. No, what I'm saying is that the, the, the statistics for the clinical trials uh, reflect uh, greater than 50% um, okay. efficacy. But what I, in, in the real world, if somebody has just a reduction of the intensity of their migraine attacks, it can be life changing. Right. And I think that really helped me when we, when we were talking earlier to understand that, because I think when you just look at that data, it maybe doesn't look as dramatic as when you think about the individuals for whom this really works and how these individuals have their lives changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me go back for it, because I'm confused. Okay. I get confused easily, obviously. You describe going from eight to four. That's 50% to me. Well, what, what was done in the clinical trials oh. is that my, is the 50% that's being referred to as the migraine days. Okay. Uh, oh, so migraine count, days. Migraine days. So about 50% of people in clinical trials will get, about half of them will get 50% reduction and about a third will get a 75% reduction. And about 15% will get a 100% reduction. They're really uh, mega responders. What, what's being discussed is not the number of migraine days going away, but within the same migraine day having reduced severity that wasn't captured well at all in the clinical trials. It's been, so when you talk, but when you talk to patients in the extension studies, the open label um, thing, the, the two benefits that come are one, you get that they lose days, but uh, they have less migraine days. The other benefit is that on the days when they still have problems, they're less of a problem. I think that the clinical trials lowball um, what, uh, pe what people will tell you is actually happening uh, to them. That's what was confusing me. In other words, the, 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 the criteria in the study are not the same criteria you're discussing. The real life the results. The real life experience. Mm -hmm. And so what are the, the plans using for criteria? The study criteria or the real life criteria? Right. Well, I think there, it's really not so different because what we're at least trying to do with, with, with our, the structure of the plan is to say those who really benefit from it should be getting it. And those who ben could benefit from something else go with that, or those who don't benefit at all from it don't. I mean, that is, that, that's the vision, that's the purpose mm -hmm. of the plan. I mean, whether or not we always make that every time, but I think that's the idea. But how do you monitor that? It's tough. In other words, it's easy to say, gee, it's, it's binary. I took the drug, my migraines went away. But how do you, how do you monitor from a cost-effective standpoint and an approval standpoint? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've made <clears> it a bit difficult. I took the drug and it's better. We've made it a bit difficult for the plans, um, for the parties. How so? Well, by using these migraine day endpoints, okay. and I think we're, you know, they, it's the wrong yeah, metric. It's one metric. It's not the only metric. If you're going to set up, you know, the if you, if you're doing a regular study for regulatory purposes, you can't have half a dozen um, primary endpoints. You've got to pick some place where you're going to start that's solid and clear to measure, and and that's and these migraine days are what what's being used. I think what I think what will happen is practice will evolve the plans will see the initial data, and hopefully they'll walk down the road with the patients and the doctors, understanding that there's other dimensions um, to the benefit. But you can't expect the plans all of a sudden to, um, to, to, to realise that there's all these other things going on when the actual clinical trials 
talked about days. You, you know, I think this is, a, this is a totally new area with this totally new therapy. We need to just evolve a little bit our, uh, our understanding of what happens so we can get, get it right for the patients. No, I agree. And I think that's what, you know, you're saying prior auth sort of a bad word, word doesn't sound good, but you know, the alternative is don't put it on the formulary and yeah. say no. It's on the formulary and there's criteria and again, there's a human who's going to be helping decide that maybe, you know, in conversation with the right. patient's doctor.